Remember this play? Ah, oh, I got a happy haircut. Feels so much better. And I got a moped. I've been working on this thing, blueprinting it, fixing it. Uh, paid $400, had to drive up to Northern Ohio to get it. Had to clean the carburetor. And I've been doing all kinds of things. I got new tires on it. Um, gosh, what else have I done? I don't know, just pee picking on it. Oh, yeah, the uh, swing arm bolt and bushings was loose. And the tire, the back wheel could wiggle back and forth. I would say over a range of uh, three-eighths to a half an inch. How that would represent itself is when you were on the throttle and the chain was pulling, it was pulling the left side of the wheel towards you, in other words, the back of the wheel to the left, and then when you would let off the throttle, it would center up. And so it gave it just a little bit of a fishy kind of feeling in the back end. So I bought... Uh, new bolt, new inner and outer bushings for it from uh, Treatland. I want to say oh, it was like 12, 14 bucks, something like that. Boy, the rear end is solid now. It does not have any play in it at all. It's awesome. Now, another problem I'm working on is look at this. I've got this sloppiness in the front end. And I figured out what it was. You see this bushing? It's a sleeve that matches, that goes between this inner tube and this outer tube. And it's about, I don't know, it's a millimeter or a half millimeter thick. And it's just like a sheet metal sleeve. And this one is fixed in position. And the one that was down here was slid all the way up to this grease line, if you can see that. And I suspect it's the same thing that's wrong with this one. Now, I have looked all over. You can't buy that part. And no one is talking about this. So I thought I would make a video uh, to show you how to tighten up your Tomos front end. So before I took this all apart, um, I wanted to give you the example of the wobbliness. The other side was exactly the same way. So what I'm doing now is I'm taking the fork out. I took the bolt out up here, and I think I can slide it down out of there now. And uh, I'm going to clean this up real nice and re-grease it. Uh, but before I re-grease it, I'm going to use uh, green Loctite, which is sleeve locker. I call it sleeve locker. To lock this other sleeve, which is in my parts cleaning tank right now. I'm going to lock that other sleeve in position. I can't find any rough spots like where they may have tack welded it. I don't know how they were relying on it staying in position. Maybe just the tension that it fits this with, but it's, it's kind of loose and um, there's no way to make sure it stays down there if I don't glue it in place. Loctite sleeve locker, um, that's what uh, I'm going to fix it with. So we'll come back when I've got pieces for reassembly. So my lovely wife made me a hamburger. <laughs> so it's taking me a little longer to get this done. Got the tube all cleaned out. I've got this all clean, Loctite 640 sleeve retainer, and this hardens well enough to use it in 60 minutes. Well, here's the sleeve, and notice the sleeve has some pretty severe wear on it. I can't just buy just the sleeve. You can see some wear here, too, on the fork, because this sleeve had been slid up to here. So this was rubbing on the inside of the tube. I can buy a replacement fork tube that has these has new sleeves on it, but I can't buy just the sleeves. And they're not expensive, they're just not in stock. I think they're 22, 25 bucks a piece, something like that. So put this on the top and the inside of the sleeve. Probably using too much. I'm gonna put it on the bottom of this part. And the idea is, it'll, since it's on the top of this and the bottom of that, it'll wipe down here, it'll wipe up there. Don't want to get any grease on it. This should not move anymore.
using my plier here to give me a little way to transfer my uh, hammer blows to the bottom of the tube. So there we are. Yeah, it's all the way up now. And I've got to re-grease this. Try not to get uh, too goofy here with the grease. I don't want to turn it back into a, a fake hydraulic. Now notice I put that in here so that will be wiping down the inside of the tube since it was installed on the inside of the tube. And then this bead will wipe up <clears throat> here. Remember this play? Look at this play. Hold the, see if I can hold the bike still. Wow, I feel like I'm down to a 32nd of an inch. That's over a quarter of an inch. So we're going to make a nice difference. Now there's a special screw at the bottom of the spring and uh, a male screw and then there's a female thread in the bottom of this and so it's just held on by the spring. So there we go. Make sure that's tight. Ooh. Ooh, that's interesting. <laughs> that needs to be in that position. I'm going to have to come back this way. It's probably, and I ordered some new gaiters for it too. That's spelled G-A-I-T-O-R-S. And I have a new cable on order. Got a couple of frayed wires in my brake cable. And let's see. Right cable goes down through that. Man, that spring is tough. I'm sure there's a cool, tricky way of doing it. There we go. Now we'll take the other side apart. I bet you it's got the same problem. I haven't looked yet. But yeah, look at that. Slid up to the top. Caked on ugly grease. This gives me a little more purchase area on top of that sleeve. Really not squeezing this hardly at all. Does seem pretty crude though. It's shaving off all that caked up grease. That's just kind of floating there. Look at that shaving coming off. dribble brake clean on it. And I'm probably going to order new uh, fork tubes for this. So that's why I'm not doing a complete rebuild. 
just don't want it to be down. I like to go for a blast around the countryside in the evenings. So I'm just going to finish finish repairing it here. It may be good enough. I'll leave it this way. I don't know. We'll see how we'll see how it rides. I think some later models this tube is just the diameter of this bushing. So they've elim eliminated this part. This is 30 millimeters OD. This is 28. So this is only half millimeter thick. I mean one millimeter thick. Just trying to keep that wet and brake clean. Let it dissolve. The uh, He's a clean part of the rag. We can't expect the uh, Loctite product to work on an oiled surface, so we've got to make sure we get it nice and clean. Okay, so we got that clean. Now we got to clean up these parts. We'll make sure that's perfectly clean. The dark drips are from the grease that's rinsing off of the spring. It's dry just that fast. Break Clean is a wonderful product. Now Loctites are anaerobic and what that means is they dry in the uh, when you remove them from the presence of air or oxygen this this bushing actually isn't worn as much wow it's a little tighter going on too I'm putting the worn, worn surface to the inside. Hmm. Now let me get something to knock it up on there. This might be a little more suitable. I had to file the, I did file the edges of all these to get rid of uh, any burrs, the edge of the wear or that, or that I caused with my goofy procedure here. not super pleased with my method but anytime I'm using a metal hammer particularly when I grab a bigger one I'm worried I might be doing something the way I shouldn't do it there we go oops yeah it's up all the way now I noticed on the other one too there was a mark right there where it looks like it could go a little farther. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna leave it right where it is. Get these parts greased up. Be enough excess. Come on. There we go. It's threading now. Well, there we go. Yeah. Needs to be right there. Look at that. I'd say I have a 30 second, maybe just a touch more in these. Might not be able to feel that when I'm riding. Can't wait to give it a try. 
I'll get this all together and then I'll go for a ride. So there we are. Got it all put back together. And I wish I'd shown you this before. This front end, man, it used to move all over the place. It's solid now. Can't wait to take it for a test drive. I wish I had a way to mount a camera on it. I don't, but uh, maybe we'll get that uh, squared away for some future moped adventures. Well, there it is. Got a couple of projects done on this bike this weekend. I got the new, new tires on it. Got the uh, rattle play out of the swing arm. I got the uh, front to back play out of the uh, front forks. Thing still needs blasted off at a uh, car wash. I've been putting in my shopping cart stainless fasteners for various parts. I don't have the whole bike. I don't have stainless fasteners for the whole bike yet. Um, this is probably realistically, uh, I'm looking, I'm, I've got a couple more of these mopeds that I've purchased. One's just a parks bike without an engine. Uh, the other one is an, also an A35 engine like this. That's the good engine to have. It's got a uh, reed valve intake on the cylinder. Not case induction, unfortunately. But it's got a 70cc uh, big bore kit on it. And it doesn't have all the Tupperware, which is all the plastic stuff here. And I'm thinking about making a lower moped out of it, lengthening the swing arm. I want to try to find some, uh, some uh, spoked Tomos wheels. They didn't make a lot of bikes with spokes in them, but I, if I can find the wheels with the big brakes, these are the 105 millimeter brakes, uh, and I'd like to find those for that other moped. And they're top tank Targa models. This is a bottom tank Targa. Top tank Targa's got a fuel tank up here. So, just screwing around, having fun with small CC uh, two strokes. They're a lot of fun. Uh, Tomoses run pretty fast. They've got a two speed transmission in it. I've been playing with the fluid in this uh, to try to change the shift characteristics as they come set up from the factory. They come out of first gear too soon and second gear is kind of boggy. And I followed some instructions online and made up some uh, fluid that was uh, half Dextron Mercon and half uh, uh, gear oil. And it's too slick so it will, uh, uh, I have to hold first gear till 17 miles an hour or so which 15 to 17 is a good place for it to shift. But then I have to release the throttle to get second to shift in, which uh, the fluid's just too slick. So the second gear centrifugal clutch is driven by the RPM of the rear wheel. And those clutches are not getting enough bite in the uh, second gear drum inside. So the fluid is too slick. So apparently gear oil is slicker than ATF. And ATF is the normal fluid for these. So my next experiment is going to be, I'm going to drain that fluid out of there uh, and I'm going to fill it with ATF, and then I'm going, which it will shift too soon then. Uh, but I'll start with that, and then I'll start adding uh, the gear oil uh, very slowly, maybe just a tablespoon at a time, until uh, I arrive at a nice shifting moped. As it is now, if I hold the throttle, it stays in first gear till about 20, and it's at maximum RPM and it doesn't really ever get into second gear. When I release it and let it get into second gear, if I give it full throttle between 20 and 23, it slips. At like 23 and up, once it gets a grip, it won't slip anymore. So I, I don't want it slipping. I want it shifting as firm as possible. So 
I'm going to go back to the factory fluid setup and uh, and then change it a little bit at a time from there. So anyways, this has been uh, something new I've been obsessing with and playing with and I can uh, use my uh, workshop tools to work on these and uh, I've just always liked mopeds. When I was a kid I had a moped and it was man it was it was a Samadhi. I don't remember what year it was but it uh, had a Minarelli V1 engine on it which is a sought after uh, power plant today for modern moped geeks. They can be uh, very easily uh, big board up to 80 cc's without any machine. So uh, not, a, not as pretty of a bike as a, as a Tomos is. So, Anyways, I'm going to play around with these a little bit. Um, get another moped and maybe my wife and I will go on one of these organized uh, moped army moped rides somewhere. And uh, have a little fun for a weekend. This has been Dave on the Crafted Channel. Get out there and have some fun. Make, do, repair. You can do it. I can do it. You can do it. Here's the tires that were on this thing. They look a little worn, but man, they're dry cracked. I don't know if you can see that, but when I squeeze it, that just opens up like a crack in there. Same thing here. When it was uh, full air pressure, all of these sidewall cracks were open. Scary stuff. Front tire looked like it was in better shape, but look at that. It's got a, a split all the way down that center groove. Sidewall's got finer cracks in it, but same kind of problems. Look at that. This thing had a weeble wobble in the front end. In addition to the play, it had a, had a noise, kind of a roosh, 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 roosh noise, which may have been this tire, but uh, when I had the wheel off, there was a rust rim around the outside of the, uh, uh, of the inside of the drum, and I wire brushed that all out, which I, so I think I had a little bit of brake drag going on there. Anyways... She's better now.